to give the ordinary world a chance and to let the ordinary world be the means of grace to you. A world that is dangerous, a world that is terrifying. To wake up in that world and to have a capacity for that way of being awake is, it seems to me, great blessedness. If we learn this, then I think we might one day also be granted our noon of heavenly lightnings or our night of fire. The important thing is that we get back home to divine ground. And I think we discover, having got back to divine ground, that we really never left home. This is the astonishing thing. stand in front of the modern world now and speak the great perennial truths into it. And the perennial truths are divine ground, that the whole universe had its origin in divine ground. It is a blossoming out of divine ground and is a blossoming still in divine ground. And that there is soul, and by soul I mean there is something in me that is older and prior to the elements. There's something in me and in all of you that is older and prior to the sun and to the galaxy and to the universe itself. It is transcendent. John is in the kitchen at home at the Anglers. Actually, it's seeing him walk up the yard from the first cottage at the other end. He would pass by the window, his wild woolly hair blowing in the wind, and then he would come in through the wooden half door. He would have to stoop. I remember him having to stoop slightly so he wouldn't bang his head. I guess John was tall, but his presence was also great. So... It kind of always seemed like a big, tall tree coming in through the door. I would run up to him, throw my arms around I have made a cradle board for you, my child. May you grow to a great old age. Of the sun's rays I made the back, of black clouds I have made the blanket. Of rainbow I have made the bow, of sunbeams I have made the side loops. Of lightnings have I made the lacings. Of river mirrorings have I made the footboard, of dawn have I made the covering, of light on high horizons have I made the bed. Very often when I climb Dorada Hill, there are great, on the south side of that hill, the southwestern side of it, there are great rocks, tremendous rocks there sitting on the sides of the hill, bre- broken away from the bedrock, some, of the, some cliffs as well, smaller cliffs, it isn't a tall hill, but... Um, it seems like maybe the ice hedge has left some great rocks there behind, some great fragmented rocks. And on the way up, very often I would stand in front of one of these rocks and I would put off all my knowing, put off all my knowledge and stand there undefended by my knowing in the presence of this rock. I would put off all my geological knowing and all my chemical knowing and my geographical knowing, put off all my knowing and stand there. Because in Connemara, I very often found that when I would go out into nature... It was my own knowing that I was meeting. I wasn't meeting the reality that was beyond my knowing. I was outstanding in front of a rock, and what I was seeing and meeting was my own geological reading of that rock, my own geological knowing of the rock. But in some sense, my geological knowing of the rock came between me and the rock. We live in a world of terrible fixed species and Berlin walls between all the species. All our personalities, all our natures are really masks in a way. So I love this sense that the species, far from being fixed, 
they are interchangeable. And if, if I am just my person, my empirical personhood, that is really a mask assumed for the moment by the one great spirit. There is one universal great spirit and it wears many masks and the masks are interchangeable. If the Christian story wishes to be the great story it is, or any story, any story that wishes to be a great story it must literally include everything. I mean, there's no point in just being ecumenical towards Protestants and Catholics to be ecumenical towards Protestants. We have to be ecumenical towards animals. And we have to be ecumenical. We can only be ecumenical towards animals when we're ecumenical towards the animal in ourselves. It is only in common consciousness that the earth can be saved. We have to take down the fences between us and animals. We have to take down the fences between us and stars. We have to acknowledge the oneness of consciousness that is in the universe. If we don't, we're going to be still in that world of us and them, and they are inferior and we are superior. If we could only once break back into common consciousness, then we had a chance. We would be incredibly enriched. We would be so stupendously enriched, and so would the animals be enriched. He talked a lot, about, we discussed a lot about what God is. I went to university in, in Brighton, in England. I did a, a, an art degree, and at the end of the, the three years you had to put on an exhibition. And um, actually my, my thesis was something that John had helped me to, to write and was there throughout my whole time of putting it together and, and I guess you could say he was like my mentor throughout the whole time. So that's why I named the final piece Nostos after him. But John passed away uh, on the night I was opening my exhibition, the very, very time actually. The exhibition of the piece that he had been mentoring, mentoring me the whole way through. Um, he passed away that exact time, 7 p.m. 1st of June, 2007. I know, John, no. You want it better. Art is blind way better. Art, you might fear. Go on, uh, go on, John. We'll do it, John. We'll do it, John. Thank you. I'm going to sing it. We'll sing it. We'll sing it. What do I say for the Lord? Oh, she even said it was a man. No, the human. The sheep, the sheep. Oh, that's a lovely one. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What, man? Sure, there's nothing to beat that. Go on, John. That's the very one. Go on. On a bright St. Patrick's Day, on the sea, a ship was lying for her lover going away. Three leaves, I adore thee. Your three leaves, I long to free. When there's brighter days in Ireland, I'll come home and marry thee. My hand hurt, John. True. Stop. I got out and I walked over to John. He said, Christ Jesus, Paul, how are you? And this happened.